Hello, this is Tony Gaddis, author of Starting Out with Java. In this video, we're going to look at the personal information class problem at the end of chapter 6 in your textbook, and we're going to work through a solution to the problem. Now, the problem tells us to design a class uh, that holds uh, the following personal data. A name, an address, an age, and a phone number. So, uh, the idea here is that uh, we're going to design this class and then we can create objects from the class and each object can hold a person's personal information. So that object might, uh, in some context, it might represent a person in the program. Uh, so that's the data that uh, the class should hold. Uh, we also uh, are asked to write appropriate accessor and mutator methods. So these will just be uh, methods that set and get data for the name, address, age, and phone number fields. And then once we've uh, created the class, uh, we will demonstrate it by writing a program that creates three instances of the class. One uh, of those objects will hold your information, and the other two uh, will hold some information on friends or family members. The first thing that we're going to do in designing this class is draw a UML diagram. Uh, now, UML stands for uh, Unified Modeling Language, and uh, earlier in this chapter you were introduced to the UML as uh, a way of diagramming object-oriented systems. So, uh, our first step is going to uh, be to draw a UML diagram listing all of the fields and the methods that this class will have. The UML diagram for a class is a rectangle, and I'm going to draw the upper part of the rectangle. When we, uh, since we're going to be listing items um, from top to bottom in the uh, in the diagram, we'll draw the bottom of the rectangle when we uh, get to the end of the diagram. Okay, so uh, first we list the name of the class, and I'm going to call this class person. Now, you could call it, uh, you know, there are a number of appropriate names. You could call it personal information. Uh, you could call it personal data. Uh, whatever you uh, think is appropriate. I think that person is an appropriate name because when we create instances of this class, those instances are going to, each one of them will represent a person uh, in the, the program. It will contain the personal data for uh, one person. So I'm going to call the class person. And then uh, in the next section, we list the fields. So we need a name field, and that's going to be a string. We need an address field, which is also a string. We need an age field, we can use an int variable for that, and then finally a phone field which will be a string. So in this section we've listed the fields that the class will have, and you'll recall from your reading that in uh, a UML diagram the minus sign that is that precedes each of these fields simply indicates that they are private. Now, in the next section, we list the methods that the class will have. And we typically begin with uh, any constructors that the class is to have. Now, in this class, uh, one constructor that might be uh, convenient would be a noarg constructor that uh, simply uh, initializes these fields, the name field, the address field, and the phone field with empty strings and maybe uh, assigns a zero to age. This would be convenient in situations where we need to create an instance of the class but we don't know the data that's going to be stored in that object. So this uh, constructor would give us the ability to do that. Um, an overloaded constructor that would be convenient to have would be one that accepted arguments for each of these fields and we could use that in situations where we need to create an object from the class and we know all of the data that the object is going to hold. So, 
So this is uh, that constructor and we're going to have some parameter variables here. I'll just call these uh, parameters my name, uh, my address, my age, and my phone. Okay, so those uh, are the constructors. Now, the, uh, the rest of the diagram uh, is going to list, in this same section, it's going to list the accessors and the mutators. So we're simply going to have a set name and get name uh, pair of methods set address, get address, set age, get age, set phone, and get phone. When we've finished sketching the diagram, it would look something like this. Uh, so just to summarize, uh, here in uh, this section we list the name of the class. Here we've listed the fields, and uh, the minus sign in front of each of the field names simply indicates that uh, they're private. Uh, in this section, we've listed the methods and the uh, plus sign in front of each method name simply indicates that those are public methods. Now, uh, in the list of methods, uh, here we have the constructors, two of them. Uh, here we have uh, the mutators, the uh, set name, set address, set age, and set phone. And then here we have uh, the accessors, get name, get address, get age, and get phone. Now let's look at the Java code for the class. Uh, here's the uh, class header, public class person, and then we've uh, got the fields listed, name, address, age, and phone. And you'll notice that all of these fields are private. Next we have the no arg constructor, and uh, you'll notice that the constructor is simply assigns an empty string to name, an empty string to address, um, zero to age and an empty string to phone. So we'll call this constructor anytime that we want to create an instance of the class but we don't really know the data that we want to store in the class. Next we have the overloaded uh, constructor, the parameterized constructor and here are the parameter variables my name, my address, my age, and my phone. So when we create an instance of the class and we want to uh, go ahead and populate the fields with data we simply pass values as arguments into these parameters. Uh, my name is assigned to name, my address is assigned to address, my age is assigned to age, and my phone is assigned to phone. So those are the two uh, constructors. Next we have the set name method. Uh, which simply accepts an argument that is assigned to the name field. Set age uh, accepts an argument which is assigned to the age field. Set address accepts an argument which is assigned to the address field. And set phone accepts an argument which is assigned to the phone field. Those uh, are the mutator methods. Now the accessor methods start here. Here's the get name method which returns a string. Well it returns the name field. Uh, get age returns an int. It returns the age field. Get address returns a string. It returns the address field. And get phone also returns a string. It returns the phone field. Now that we've written the class uh, the next step is to demonstrate uh, the class in a program by creating uh, three objects. You'll recall that the programming problem tells us to create uh, three instances of the class, one to hold your data uh, and two others to hold the data for fr a friend or a family member. Uh, so here is a program that I've written, uh, Personal Info Demo 1. I'm actually going to show you two demonstrations and this is the first one. In the main method, here in these three statements, I'm creating the three objects. Uh, in this statement, I create the variable me, which references a person object. 
Uh, the, in this statement, the variable my friend one references a person object. And in this statement, my friend two references a person object. You'll notice that I've uh, used the no arg constructor. Uh, so we've created three objects in memory. We just haven't passed any data uh, to be stored in those objects. Uh, here in this uh, set of statements, I'm storing data in the, uh, in the me object, the object that is referenced by the me variable. me.setName, that uh, assigns my name. To, to the me object's name field, me.setAge, I'm passing uh, an age, me.setAddress, passing an address, and me.setPhone. So here I'm passing values using the mutator methods uh, to populate the fields of the me object. Uh, I do uh, the same thing pretty much for my friend one. I pass a name, I pass an age, I pass an address and I pass a phone number. Then here in these statements I do the same thing with my friend too. I pass a name, I pass an age, I pass an address and a phone number. So when the program reaches, uh, reaches the end of this statement we will have populated all three objects with data. And then uh, in the rest of the program, we're going to display the data in each object by calling the object's accessor methods. Uh, here in this block of code, uh, we display the data that was stored in the me object. We call me.getName, me.getAge, me.getAddress, and me.getPhone. Then here in this block of code, uh, we uh, call the accessor methods uh, using uh, the my friend one object and then here in this block of code we use the my friend two object um, to call the accessor methods getting that object's data. Okay, so let's compile and execute this program and here's the uh, the output and as you can see uh, this output. Uh, this is the data that was retrieved from the me object. Um, here, this data, this is uh, the data that was retrieved from the my friend one object. And then uh, the, here in this output, we see the data that was retrieved from the my friend two object. So looks like everything's working okay. Um, now I want to show you one other program to demonstrate the parameterized constructor. So recall that the parameterized constructor, which is shown here, accepts arguments for uh, the name, uh, the address, the age, and the phone number. Well, in this program, Personal Info Demo 2, uh, I, when I create the objects, I'm passing those arguments to the parameterized constructor. Uh, here in this statement I'm creating uh, an object referenced by the me variable and I'm passing uh, a name, an address, an age, and a phone number to the constructor. Uh, here uh, my friend one references a person object and we're passing data as arguments to the constructor. Here my friend two references a person object and we've passed arguments uh, to the constructor. Then uh, the rest of the program works exactly like the previous program. Uh, we simply get the uh, name, age, address, and phone number from each of those objects and we display it on the screen. So let's compile this program and execute and we should see the same output that we saw in the previous program. And uh, here we have uh, the data that was uh, stored in the me object. Here we have the data stored in the my friend one object and here we have the data stored in the my friend two object. 